In this tutorial I'll be covering text and effects which are used to communicate to your players what's happening in your game mode. These are fairly simple once you understand how they work but they can be time consuming and if you aren't careful they can weigh heavily on your server load. I'll show you how you can avoid that though later on. So let's start with text. There are four types of text. HUD text is placed starting from the top left, top center, or top right of the player's screen. A big message is a quick pre-animated message that appears at the top of the player's screen above the reticle. And the small message is a similar, but obviously smaller, message that appears below the reticle. Then in-world text is text that you can define a position for and it will appear somewhere on the physical map rather than on the player's HUD. When you want to display text in a program, typically what is being displayed is called a string. There are four types of strings in the workshop as of now. The first kind of string in this game is called a custom string. Here we can simply type in our own text. And this was added just a couple months after the workshop made its debut, so until then we were actually unable to type in our own strings. Before that we needed to use the string option. This option is pretty complicated and time consuming. Additionally, it's not always accurate. When we select string we have the option to select one out of many pre-selected words or variables that Blizzard gave us to use. In terms of accuracy, this was extremely limiting when we couldn't use our own strings. For example, in Horizon Breakout, I have a teleporter, but I couldn't use the word teleporter because it's not in the list of words that Blizzard gave us. So I had to find a combination of words that kind of worked and got the message across. I wound up using the words hidden and entrance which wasn't exactly what I wanted to say, but it was the best I could do. That's why having custom strings now is such a blessing. So you may be wondering how to select multiple words for just one string here. And that's where these uh, variables come in. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna refer to these as string variables, so you know which variables I'm talking about. Whenever you select a string that contains a string variable, such as these, you can then plug something else into that string variable that will show up in your message. So let's say we wanted to display a player's name and score. I think a good fit for that would be this one here. We can plug the player's name into zero and the score into one. By default, uh, zero, one, and two are all set to null, which is nothing. To set 0 to the player's name, we can simply just use the event player if the rule is referencing each player, or maybe we'll just use the slot of the player if we want to just use one specific player's name. And then for their score, let's say we're storing their score in player variable A. And this would just show the player in slot 0 on team 1's name, and then a colon, and then a space, and then the player variable A of the player in slot 0 on team 1. Now you could also select another string to be added into the main string up here and you can put together sort of a string of strings, but it can get really messy and confusing once you get a lot of strings in one string. This is another reason why being able to type custom strings is a blessing. Now another kind of string is the hero icon string, which is just the face of a specific hero. And then you just have the icon string, which is just a couple of shapes that Blizzard allowed us to use here. So to demonstrate a string, I'm going to create a big message that announces what hero the player picked when they spawn in. I'll create a rule for each player with a condition that the player has spawned. For the action, I'll have a big message display that's visible to all players. We'll go ahead and just use a custom string for this. 
something nifty about these custom strings so that we can still use these string variables. So if we just go ahead and type this in, we can then go down here and fill in the string variables just the same as if it were a regular string. So for this we can just select the event player for the player and for their hero we'll just use the hero icon string. And to make sure that it's showing the right hero, instead of selecting a specific hero, we'll just uh, use the hero of the event player. So when I spawn in, I should see that message with my name and the hero I'm playing. Yep. Each type of text works this way. The only difference between each type of text is where in the game that they appear. Another quick trick I'd like to demonstrate is some positioning for HUD text. With custom strings, you can copy and paste line breaks from Notepad or something like Notepad to move strings down to the center of the player's screen. This way, if you have some sort of menu you'd like to the player to see more prominently, you can do so cleanly. So here I have about five line breaks copied over from Notepad. I'll just go ahead and paste them right into my custom string zone here. And that'll be in the subheader because with uh, headers they're outlined and you don't want to see a big empty box in here. Um, so here we have several blank lines. So we'll just create a new HUD text here. Put it on the top, same as the other one. And the sort order will make it higher than our line break so it appears underneath the line breaks. And I'll change this to red. And I'll just type in text. If I go ahead and restart, spawn in here. I will protect the innocent. Normally, um, without these line breaks here, again, you, you can't see them, but they're there. Uh, this text would be hugging right underneath the built-in game icons up here. Um, so because we, we put in those five or so line breaks, the text got moved down to here. You could add more line breaks if you wanted the text to be further down in the screen. So now let's talk about effects, or sometimes referred to as entities. There are quite a few different effects to choose from, but some have more utility while others are intended more for style. The uh, beam effect, or the sphere, or the light shaft, or the orb, or the ring, they all are more utility based because they have clear shapes and are great for defining areas or custom abilities or whatever. And then the cloud sparkles and the aura and the sound effects, they're better for adding style to your game modes. Now, placing effects is really simple. Each effect has two values uh, in placing them its position and its radius, or if it's a sound effect, the loudness or volume of it. The only exception to placing effects is the beam effect, which requires two positions, the start and end, where the beam will appear between those two positions. So let's define an area that's visible to a player. I navigated to an open spot here where I can place a sphere effect. I want anyone who enters this area to be pushed out of it. To easily keep track of where this position is, I'll just go ahead and save it under a global variable. I'll create my sphere effect here, and for the position, I'll just select global variable A, where I saved it, and I'll set the radius of the sphere to 5. And then we'll talk about reevaluation uh, in a little bit. Now I reloaded just now, but this and the sphere is there but nothing happens if I go inside of it. Now, there are two methods here that I could use um, for keeping players out. Uh, I could either apply several impulses away from the sphere or just simply teleport the player to a different location. For this example, we'll just use some impulses. So I'll create a rule for each player and I'll just check to see if their distance from that position that I saved to the event player is less than 5, which is the radius that I set 
dimensions of the sphere. And like I said, I could use a teleport to a specific location, but we're just going to apply impulse to the event player. And the direction will be direction towards the center of, uh, and the, with the start position being the center of the sphere, which is a global variable A still. And the end position will be towards the event player. So it'll push them in a direction from the center of the sphere to the player. So that guarantees it'll always be away from the sphere. And for the speed, we'll just do 20. That's fine. Um, relative to, to the world and cancel contrary motion. And we'll just add a short wait here. And loop if the condition is true. So if the player is still inside, uh, push them away again. So we'll go ahead and restart that. And upon testing this, we can see that I am not able to enter this area. It just pushes me away when I try send effects through it and shoot through it but I cannot go through it myself when you no longer need your text or effects you're able to destroy them with commands the simplest way of doing so is to use destroy all effects or destroy all HUD text or what have you um, the only issue with this is that you might need to destroy only one effect instead of all of them. And this is another case where variables come in handy. After creating an effect, you can then set that effect to a variable. So here I have a sphere being created at the player whenever they press primary fire. And that immediately sets global variable A to the last created entity. And then to destroy it, I have it set that whenever the player presses secondary fire, it destroys the effect under global variable A. So you can see if I primary fire, a sphere gets created around me, and that is being stored in global variable A right now. If I right click, it gets destroyed. Now keep in mind, um, if you overwrite or empty the variable where the effect is being saved, the only way to destroy it after that is to use destroy all effects. So let's say I created a sphere and that's being stored in global variable A. If I create another sphere, now global variable A is storing that new sphere um, and it, that new sphere overwrote that first sphere. So if I destroy it, you can see it sort of gets rid of one of them. It's less bright now, um, but I can't, that, that uh, first sphere is stuck there unless I had some way to destroy all effects. One last thing I wanted to cover regarding text and effects is the reevaluation here. Uh, here you define what the game checks over and over again throughout the game, such as its position and radius and who it's visible to. Again, Overwatch is optimized for up to 12 players and not 100 reevaluating entities existing all at once. Creating and destroying a lot of texts or effects can increase the load on the server. Um, something you can do to avoid the custom game crashing though is to focus more on effect visibility rather than repeatedly creating and destroying new texts and effects. For example, in Horizon Breakout there are six different kinds of power-ups that drop from enemies. Now originally each enemy death had a chance of creating an effect that would represent a power-up and it would be destroyed upon pickup from a player. Now to alleviate some stress on the server after running into some issues with crashing, I reworked them so that they are only created once at the beginning of the game. Now the enemies have a chance to move the effect to where they died rather than creating a new one each time they dropped it. Similarly, when picked up by the player, the, uh, the power-ups move back outside of the map where they are unseen. And then regarding um, the visibility of an effect or text, um, set the visibility to a filtered array of players. 
um, who have some sort of variable, let's say a, a player variable, where their player variable A equals 1 or something like that. Um, that way you can just create this effect once at the beginning of the match and then if you wanted your players, if you wanted this effect to appear to your players, you could simply just change their player variable A to 1 and then when you no longer needed them to see it, just change their player variable A to 0, and they will no longer be able to see it. This greatly helps in reducing stress on the custom game server. Now that wraps up this tutorial for text and effects. If you'd like to learn more, check out my workshop tutorials playlist here on my channel. Also, you can join my workshop discord to ask questions, interact with other workshop creators and players, and stay up to date on my own workshop creations. Thanks for watching.